In this Knife Talk video, we're going to be talking about these knives and uh, Wii knives in general and their um, heavy collaborations in 2018. So uh, I'm doing this um, Knife Talk video in my car, as you can see, and I'm not sure if that's the best uh, location to do it because I do have more than one knife to talk about, but I'm gonna see if it goes well and I hope uh, hope it's not too difficult to watch. But these are really cool knives here and I think that it's an interesting thing that's happening in the knife industry. So to start out here, I'll talk about the first one of these knives that I got, which is a little bit different than the other two. The first one I got is this one. So put the other two down for now and uh, we'll talk about this one. This is the Elijah Isham, Isham Blade Works, Black Star. And like the other three, it has no Wii Knife branding. But it is manufactured by Wii Knives. And you can see that it has the Elijah Isham or Isham, I, th I guess it's Isham. I always thought it was Isham, but uh, I guess it's Isham Blade Works um, logo. You can see that there. I'm not exactly sure what, what that is, but it's a shield of some sort uh, with some kind of design on it. And um, this is, again, a, a knife designed by Elijah Isham, who has been really kind of one of the hottest, if not the hottest, uh, most sought-after knife designers of 2018. He really kind of burst onto the scene and has done a whole bunch of collaborations with different knife companies. Um, Wii knives, uh, I think he did a couple Kaiser knives, um, so a bunch of different designs, and he has kind of a uh, unique and interesting style. Um, so I wanted this knife and decided to get it because it has a couple cool things to it. First off, it has the look to me of a traditional knife. Now, certainly it's not built like a traditional knife. It has, you know, torque screws, and it has a detent locking, so, well, a detent, um, system rather than a backspring. You can see there's no backspring. Uh, it also has a pocket clip, which is one of the big, uh, at least from the blade forums, traditional knife forum uh, rules for what is and isn't a traditional knife. The pocket clip excludes this. But to me, it has the look of a kind of halfway between or maybe three quarters of the way to a gunstock pattern and a quarter of the way to a dogleg pattern. And I really like the look of this clip point blade also. Uh, so really classic kind of upswept clip point with a nice swedge and a long pull on both sides. And this is a non-locking knife. So as you can see, I just pushed it closed and you can just open it. And what it is, again, it's a detent system. So there's a, a, a spring-loaded bar in there that has a detent ball in it. And there are two different detent holes on the, the blade. And uh, it's not an easy uh, mechanism to get right, I think, especially being that this is a flipper. So if it wasn't a flipper, it wouldn't matter too much about the detent strength. You could just have it so that it goes open and closed. Uh, this one, though, is really, really well done. It's super easy to flip open. I've shown this to some people who I didn't tell them that it was a, a detent flipper, uh, and they've been able to flip it without much issue. So it's definitely a light switch style flipper, but it flips open really, really well, and it's really well built. It has, you know, no side to side blade play at all. It came perfectly centered, really as perfectly centered as, as a knife can get, I think. And just a really good looking knife. No real issues, almost, you know, you can barely see that transition there. So it almost kind of starts to look like an integral knife. Has this inlay, and I typically don't like inlays, but I think that it looks good on this knife because of the kind of chamfering on the edges. It, it really comes together well and looks good with this carbon fiber insert or inlay on the G10. Um, the blade is ground well. Um, you you know, the swedges are are ground pretty evenly, um, and it just seems like a really really well made knife. So I was really impressed by it, and uh, it's an M390 blade steel. So I was really impressed by this knife, and um, to be honest, somewhat surprised, but I, I understand why. Somewhat surprised that it doesn't have any branding by Wii because this is a, a Wii knives manufactured knife. Um, but I do understand that one thing that they provide as a um, kind of OEM style uh, company is, you know, manufacturing for other brands. Um, it's interesting that Wii Knives actually has, I believe, 
two different brands that they make of their own. Uh, I'm pretty sure that We Knives, uh, well, they have We Knives manufactured under that brand. And then they also have the Civivi or Civivi, I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but C I V I uh, knife brand, which is kind of their more budget end knives. And then they're also making a whole bunch of collaborations. I had had a Wii knife before and it was really well made. Um, it was a, one of their more expensive knives and I ended up trading it away. Um, but I was really, really happy with this knife and really impressed by the manufacturing of it. And they also did a collaboration or really they manufactured a knife for another knife designer that I've been following for a while, longer than Elijah Isham, um, and that's Ray Laconico. So Ray Laconico is a custom knife maker who is really my favorite, uh, or I like his designs the best, of modern knife designs. And I really appreciate the simplicity, kind of the um, minimalism of his knife designs. And he's done some collaborations with other knife companies before, like Kaiser, and I wasn't quite sure that they hit the look that I was going for. But this knife is the Mastrop Ray Laconico Keen. And I thought that it really hit that design element that I that I enjoy so much about Ray Laconico's knives. So I decided to get one. And again, it is a knife that's manufactured by Wee Knives, but it has no branding of theirs. And this one, I think, is just as much a, a great indicator of how well Wee Knives can make a knife as the Black Star. So uh, it definitely has Mastrop's branding. That's probably my least favorite thing about this knife. I don't like that. Uh, font that they use. I don't think it fits well on the, on this knife, um, but S35 VN steel and um, another kind of the second worst thing about this knife, which are really minor complaints, shows how good of a knife it is, is that the Ray Laconico on the spine of the blade should be the other way. It should be right side up when you hold the knife like this. I'm not sure why they did that. I think it might be because the Mastrop branding is on this side, but um, it's just one of those things. But other than that, it's just a superbly made knife. Now, it's a, a flipper, and it's a very smooth flipper. It's probably the, I'm gonna say it's the smoothest knife I've ever had. It's ceramic ball bearing um, washers, and it uh, just rides really smoothly on those. So it can flip both as light switch, so this is a light switch flip, and then also as a push button. And it flips really, really well in both of those styles. It drops closed easily when you unlock it. Um, it's slightly, very, very slightly off center towards the clip side, uh, but I did adjust the pivot a little bit. Um, it has no blade play uh, once I adjusted it. It didn't really come with any blade play, but the, the one screw did unloosen or did loosen a little bit. Uh, so I, I fixed that and now absolutely no blade play even when unlocked, no blade play there, no forward and back blade play, and it's a really, really well-made knife. Um, it, again, just flips superbly, uh, nice kind of, let me I'll close it here, 3D kind of uh, grind on the handle so that it feels really good in the hand, um, nice lines on everything, no machining marks that I see, uh, has a lock bar insert that's done well, um, the clip fits uh, Ray's designs that he does on his custom knives really well. Um, so just a really, really well-made knife. Again, um, no branding of Wii knives because they're just the manufacturer. One thing though that really was interesting about this knife is that they actually uh, advertised on Mastrop the behind the edge thickness. And that's something that really no one does. Um, the reason for that is because it's very, very difficult to, to be super consistent with that. Um, even with you know high-end modern machinery, I think it's extremely, extremely difficult to be consistent across a large run of knives. And uh, that's um, you know impressive if if true. I haven't tested it. I have calipers, but I, I haven't gotten them out. Um, but it does slice really, really well. So really impressed with this knife, uh, really impressed with the manufacturing of it. You can see that it has slight chamfers on both sides of the blade, so it feels good. You know, it doesn't have sharp edges or anything like that. Really, really nice knife. Um, one interesting thing about this knife was that I noticed that you can see there on the blade, there's this kind of smoky or almost shadow look on the blade, and it's on both sides, and I think 
it, it's almost like a patina. You can see it right there. And S35VN really shouldn't have a patina forming. It's not like patina on a carbon steel blade uh, where it gets darker. It's just almost kind of a smoky look. And uh, I was really, really intrigued, kind of just confused by why that was happening. Um, another YouTube uh, rev knife channel, I'm pretty sure it was Cedric and Ada, but I always forget. I should look it up and be sure, but pretty sure it was Cedric and Ada did a rust resistance test on the Keen and found that it did really, really well, second only to the LC200N on his uh, Spyderco Caribbean. Could have been Advanced Knife Pro. But either way, uh, really don't understand why that's happening. Um, I don't think that it's really likely that this isn't S35VN. It would be really a surprise to, to confirm that this is not S35VN. So I think that it is S35VN and it's maybe just something to do with the finish or what I was cutting, but I don't think that it is what I was cutting because as you'll see later, um, I actually have seen this on another knife made by Wee Knives. So I don't know if it's something about how they heat treat or how they finish the knives, but that was really interesting. And that brings me to the third knife that I'm gonna talk about here, which is another mass drop collaboration with a uh, really well-respected designer. So this is the Bob Terzuula Mass Drop CTF or Compact Tactical Folder. And um, it's a really classic Bob Terzuola design fits in a lot of the design elements that he is known for really classic drop point or uh, almost spear point type blade yeah more of a spear point um, swedges on both sides of the blade long poles or uh, fullers whichever and a thumb disc opener and also a flipper this one also runs on uh, ceramic ball bearings it's not quite as smooth as the keen but i haven't had it quite as long so you know, it could smooth out, but not quite as smooth, but you can see that it still flips really easily. Now this one is definitely more of a light switch flipper. You can see that it has kind of a cut out there uh, so that your finger can go down as you do the light switch flip. And it doesn't really work quite as well as a push button, but um, it's a, it's a well-made knife again. This one is a liner lock. So the other one was a, uh, a frame lock there. This one's a liner lock. I believe that this is a uh, titanium liner lock, but again, I didn't check on that yet since my last video about this knife, and I should check on it. So I'll put that in the uh, com or in the um, description if it's not a titanium, but rather a steel liner lock. But you can see it locks up really well, um, about 50% there, and no blade play, even when unlocked, no side to side, no front and back. So really, really well made on the lock. Um, again, really smooth, and both, or actually all three of these knives <clears throat> have internal stop pins. So rather than a stop pin, you know, between the two par uh, pieces of the handle, they have stop pins in the blade. You can see it there really easily. You can kind of see it in there, and you can see it a little bit easier where that stop pin runs on the Keen. <clears throat> so, um, you know, that's... Uh, a, just a design element that we seems to use frequently. This one's slightly off center towards the clip side, but it doesn't, you know, go, get anywhere near. It actually can't really be pushed over, um, so it's it's not going to rub at all. Uh, really easy to open. Any of the, you know, you can use this like a a long pull. You can open it with the thumb disc. Really smooth. Um, and again with the flipper. And the handles are really nice on this also. So you can see that it's it's kind of a um, a sleek design because the handle scales go the whole way across the the handle and kind of cover up the the screws so you don't actually see the screws that hold in this backspacer and you also don't see the screws that hold in the clip which gives the clip a really nice look it's not a super deep carry clip but it's a good looking clip i think and well made from we as the clips on the other two are, are. you can see here um, and they all have a good amount of tension easy to put in your pocket and everything and just work really well the handles on this one also are well made with this chamfering along the whole edge uh, of the handles and it feels good in the hand but to bring me back to that uh, kind of thing that was going on with the blade steel on the keen this one also has a little bit of that smokiness you can see that and I used a sunshine cloth 
on this knife to try to rub that off and it won't come off so I'm not sure what it is but uh, I, I haven't I fir at first the only thing I could think of that might have you know been really reactive and put this uh, kind of patina on the keen is I was cutting some elk meat with it and I didn't know if that had some property that did that but I haven't cut elk meat with this knife and it also has that kind of smokiness to it you can see that there along the fuller and a little bit there and then also on this side and this side so I don't know what it is but the more I think about it I think that it probably has something to do with the way we knives heat treats or finishes their S35VN because this again is S35VN whereas the one knife out of these three that I haven't noticed any of that and you can see looking closely at this fuller which is similar to the fuller on the uh, Bob Terzuola CTF there's none of that on this so it, it looks like this M390 blade being a different steel than the other two doesn't have that so I'm really interested to see that um, you know, I like these knives, so I don't really want to send them off, but I uh, had an offer from someone on Instagram, wish I remembered right now, but I don't, that has uh, some machine that can test the steel without destroying the knife. So I might send this knife off. Uh, I'm still trying to decide on that because I don't really want to send it off just because I enjoy having it and carrying it and using it. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see why these s35 vn knives from uh manufactured by we knives have that same kind of interesting unusual unexpected thing going on with the blades uh, but again all three of these knives are collaborations with really well-known knife designers these two are collaborations are produced by mass drop whereas this one is kind of an independent brand done by you know Isham Blade Works um, but all three really really well done respecting the design of the designer I think they all do fit really well now one thing that isn't we knives, a we knives problem but probably more of a mass drop problem is that this doesn't say Terzuola which typically Bob Terzuola knife designs do and I think he was a little bit you know unhappy with that but I think in the future if he does more designs with them they will add his name to the knives and I think it wasn't like a deal breaker for him so overall I'm just again I wanted to make this video because I'm really really impressed by Wii knives manufacturing and their ability to bring these knives that are designed by high-end knife designers and, and sought-after knife designers to market at a really really good quality level and a pretty uh, reasonable price so this has you know carbon fiber g10 and m390 steel which is a you know high-end steel this knife is about 150 dollars the other thing about this knife it's a little different than these two is that this was a small batch knife so there were only i believe 150 made in black handles and 150 made in green handles they might have bumped that up to 200 each but that's a pretty small run for a modern style knife gec does way smaller runs than that uh, pretty often but uh, you know that's traditional knives for a modern knife design made by a modern knife maker manufacturer that's a small amount so i i do think that that probably increased the price somewhat because of you know less economy of scale for we knives to manufacture that knife this knife and this knife are about $150. This knife is actually $140 because I didn't get any of the, you know, this. you could also get this knife with a fuller in the handle or holes in the handle. I decided to go with this because I think it fits the aesthetic that I like about Ray Laconico's knives a little better. This one was about $150. They also had green and tan G10 versions and carbon fiber versions. The carbon fiber was a little bit more expensive but um, all three come in around $150. And for the level of manufacturing, uh, the, you know, the fact that you can get knives designed by people who, you know, uh, Ray Laconico knife over $500 almost always, um, one of his custom, and even some of his other production knife collaborations are significantly more expensive. For example, the Min Pin recently came out, which was a production Chinese-made Ray Laconico design. 
that was uh, about $225. And then he had the Easy e which uh, came out recently, which was like $400 to $700, I think. So significantly more expensive. Bob Terzuola's custom and semi-custom knives are even more expensive than that. Um, I'm not super, super knowledgeable on the prices of those, but definitely up there in the 500 plus range. And even some of Elijah Isham's other um, knife designs with Wii knives or with other you know manufacturers are in the 200 plus range. So um, I'm really happy with the uh, value ratio on these knives. I have, for a while I didn't really buy too many mo uh, modern style knives, but these knives have kind of, you know, really made me more happy with buying new uh, modern style knives. Now I actually traded into this one uh, for uh, a custom slip joint, but otherwise I think that the value on all three of these knives is really good. And I'm looking forward to uh, what, the, what collaborations Wii Knives does with other you know designers in the future for example there's a Govco or Gavco however you say it the Thresher just came out uh, through Mastrop and it's another Wii manufactured knife and I think it looks really good they also have done some uh, design collaborations through mass produced by Mastrop designed by Ferrum Forge knives uh, and made by Wii knives, manufactured by Wii knives, and those look really nice. I know people really like the Gent, which is a smaller knife, even smaller than this one. Uh, not quite as small as the Black Star, but a smaller knife, and it's one that I've considered checking out because it looks like a nice design also. Um, so I'm looking forward to what Wii knives does in the future, and I think that it is kind of a, a new thing in the knife industry for a Chinese knife company to make such high quality production knives at such a reasonable price point. And, I, and I'm interested to see what it does to the industry as a whole. So I just wanted to make this video on these three knives, showing them off, talking about how well I think that they are manufactured, and also showing some of the, you know, kind of quirky or if you could say issues on these knives. So uh, I guess my, my to bring it all, to distill it down, I wouldn't hesitate to buy knives made by, manufactured by Wii Knives. And if there's a knife design that you really like and the knife is actually made by Wii Knives, I wouldn't hesitate to get it. Um, so again, this is the Aishan Blade Works Black Star, Bob Terzuola Mass Drop CTF, and Ray Laconico Mass Drop Keen, all manufactured by Wii Knives and uh, all really nice knives. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like it. If you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to uh, leave them below. I always try to answer all of them. And uh, if you enjoy this video, if you've watched this far, I'm sure you do. Uh, I've got videos on all of these knives, plus a whole bunch of videos on other knives. So check those out and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to go out and do good.